Yeah, and so, you know, that's what uh, draws me to be kind of proactive on the front end of that. If I can prevent injuries or if I can, you know, if a horse has a, a bad stifle, if I can get ahead of that thing and then, you know, uh, and manage it before it becomes a problem, uh, then, then it's way, way more efficient, effective, and less likely that the horse is going to end up damaging something else, like a suspensory. You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Welcome to The Ride, a bi-weekly podcast brought to you by Horse and Rider Magazine, co-hosted by Nicole Cherico and Devin Conley. In each episode, we chat with some of the industry's top trainers, clinicians, horsekeeping experts, and professionals to share inspiring stories, training philosophies, and the importance of living your best Western horse life. This week's episode is brought to you by Eeyore Strips. Contrary to human athletes that consume nutrition during competition, our equine athletes rarely get anything immediately before, after, or during exercise, but not anymore. Patent pending equine oral recovery strips, also known as Eeyore strips, were developed by visionary equine sports medicine veterinarian Patrick Young. These unique oral film strips dissolve on the horse's gums and get absorbed directly through the mucous membranes over 10 to 20 minutes. Being delivered directly into the bloodstream provides rapid absorption, improving hydration and recovery, while avoiding further insult to the GI system and potential gastric ulcers. The original formula delivers a small burst of glucose, electrolytes, and vitamin B12 to support performance and recovery on demand. Eeyore strips are great for improving and sustaining hydration, an important component in keeping our horses healthy and thriving. For more information, visit eeyorestrips.com. That's eorstrips.com. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Ride. This is your host, Nicole, and today I am here with Dr. Patrick Young. He is the owner of The Athletic Horse, and he's also the owner of Eeyore Strips, which is a brand new kind of performance horse product that has come out lately. So we're going to talk to him today and learn a little bit more about his background as an equine vet, his experience in the performance horse world, and how Eeyore Strips came to be what they are today. So thank you so much for coming on, Pat. You bet. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole. It's so, good to be here. So for the people who don't know you, I'm very fortunate that I do. You were my vet back when I lived in Oklahoma, and so I was very excited when you came out with this new product. But for those who might not be familiar with you or your practice, can you kind of talk a little bit about your experience in the horse world, how you became a vet, um, You know where your passion for horses sure. kind of came from? You bet. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm going to start a little further back than that, but I'm the youngest in a family of 10. So uh, I grew up being an observational learner, really, you know, uh, watching what my older brothers did. Um, Seven of them are medical doctors. And so I kind of followed their footstep. My dad was a general surgeon. I always kind of wanted to be a cowboy and a doctor. So this was about as close as I could get. Um, essentially, you know, growing up, uh, when I was a kid, like infant, we had horses. My dad had race horses and then we didn't have, you know, he got tired of living on the farm, driving in town in the middle of the night for emergency surgery or whatever. So we moved back to town. We kept the farm, got rid of the horses. But so essentially me growing up, I never really had the opportunity to get that uh, horse fix, so to speak. So I decided to um, pursue animal science. I grew up working for a veterinarian there in town, Dr. Uh, Wisdom. And uh, just kind of idolized him and, and you know, uh, followed him around and learned a ton from him. And then we uh, went to Texas A&M uh, Animal Science degree and bachelor, bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Yeah, I didn't like that. Let me re- let me repeat that. So, yeah, I went to Texas A&M, got a, a bachelor's degree in animal science, and then applied to a bunch of different vet schools. Um, 
And initially, Texas A&M, I didn't get in for a couple years, took a couple years off to, um, according to the counselor at, at A&M, wanted me to reevaluate my career goals. So that's what I did. But I uh, worked on the Stocker Cattle Ranch for two years. And honestly, it was at uh, Pruitt Ranch and uh, Billy Near and Luciano. Those two dudes taught me more about horses and cattle than I had learned thus far. And realistically, that was probably two of the best years of my education. And then following that, I was able to uh, get into Mississippi State and Colorado State. Mississippi was just a wiser choice for me at the time. So that's kind of how I got into it. Never, you know, going in, I thought I'd be either a mixed animal practitioner or a, you know, large animal practitioner. But I knew I was going to do large animal. And then once I got into school, that's kind of how it evolved into straight horses. As I just saw all the opportunity and all the different uh, techniques and procedures that we were able to do and the way the technology was coming at us, I just uh, decided that that was the, the route for me. Were, was there any pivotal moments or like mentors that kind of influenced you on your path to just focusing on the horses versus, you know, like a mixed or, you know, like kind of what you said you thought you would go into? Uh, you know, yes and no. It was just the the group as a as a whole, like a lot of my uh, teachers at Mississippi State, the equine and large animal practitioners. And instructors were awesome, Dr. Rashmir and Dr. Hopper. Like a lot of those guys were very influential on me as far as, uh, you know, pursuing that aspect of it and kind of focusing most of my efforts all on uh, the equine practice at that point. But it's amazing how fast that it has evolved. I've been doing, you know, I graduated 26 years ago, so when I was in school, we still had to develop films by running them through a machine. And when that machine didn't work, we would have to do it the old fashioned way where we dipped it. So, you know, it's, and now we have digital radiography and, and all the bells and whistles. And, you know, a lot of the uh, equipment that we have just makes our lives so much easier and just enables us to do so much uh, more thorough, better work. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And it was, you know, growing up the time that I grew up in and uh, being a part of that evolution of equine medicine has been, you know, very exciting and very fun just to be able to do, watch it evolve and, and kind of be a part of it. And, know what to use when and you know it just gives you lots of choices lots of options and it gives you know horse owners a a heck of a lot more options to be able to to choose and and you know uh it's just a lot better than it was you know 26 years ago i can guarantee you that oh absolutely and just kind of touching on what you were saying where you know we've had so much advancements in technology and, and science and education i think it's really changed our performance horse industry as well oh absolutely absolutely you know and and it's even evolved pretty significantly within the last 10 to 15 years you know you see you'd have about two options for injections (laughs) and so now you have a half dozen to a dozen of different types of joint injections or different types of uh, orthobiologics or regenerative therapies. And, you know, uh, it's it's an exciting time to be a an equine sports medicine practitioner. Oh, yeah. I always go back to one thing that I always look at because ulcers is such a hot topic right now. And 20 years ago, I don't remember growing up on the show circuit, people ever talking about ulcers or preventative medic, you know, medication for ulcers. And now it seems like, you know, we're all focused on making sure that these horses are as comfortable as they can in these high stress environments. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, that's that's what you see in those environments, uh, you know, when a horse is at a show or they're 
they're not only at a show, they're in a different environment. They're exposed to a bunch of different uh, horses and a bunch of different bacteria at the same time. So you're going to see everything from ulcers due to stress. Um, you know, a lot of those horses, they go off their water. They don't drink as much. So hydration becomes dehydration becomes a problem. And subsequently, colic ensues. But also, you know, a lot of people have to consider when they're getting prepped for a show, that's when they're getting crunched on pretty hard because everybody's trying to get the best out of what that horse can give them at that point. And so that's even more stressful on their, you know, not just their GI system and their immune system, but also, you know, their bones, joints, tendons, ligaments. So it's a... Uh, it's a tough time, and you know, uh, fortunately, we're all aware and very in tune with a lot of the the problems that they can uh, incur during that process. So, you know, the best step is just to try to be ahead of it. Yeah, and and what we'll talk about a little bit further on in this podcast is the product that you came out with to kind of help with that scenario. But before we kind of dive into that, performance horses are definitely your passion, and that's what you tend to focus on in your personal clinic. Can you talk a little bit about like what kind of gravitated you towards that? I know you're an athlete as well, and you've you've done some pretty insane Ironmans, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I, it's, I would it's, imagine it's been. Those- it's it's been a little while, but yes, uh huh, yeah, I I've done two, um, but uh, yeah, so you know, and and it's fun working on athletes and getting them fine tuning and being able to look at a horse and examine a horse and palpate them and know that okay, if I do this, I can make this horse way more comfortable, way more uh, at ease with doing his job. And so that just understanding the sport and the biomechanics of the horse and what the horse has to accomplish, you know, then you put a rider on their back. So there's a lot, you know, lots of moving parts. So you just kind of have to uh, visualize all that and go through it. And, you know, at this point, uh, I always joke around with everybody. I said, you know, when I graduated school, I thought I knew everything. But after doing it for like 26 years, the more you know, the more you don't know. Yeah, you know, about nine out of 10 horses, I feel like I got a pretty good feel for what's going on with them after just palpating them, kind of flexing their joints locally without even seeing them move. But, you know, there's one out of 10 that's dang sure gonna fool you. And it's, if you don't find it, it's not that you didn't know, it's that you didn't look. So you just got to take your time. And coming from, you're you're not only a veterinarian, and that focuses on performance horses, but you've also owned performance horses. You've done cutting events. You've, you've you know, been a horse owner as well. How has that kind of changed the way that you work as a veterinarian coming from like that you're also a horse owner. You you have performance horses. You're you're kind of on both sides of that, right? And so you know, I think that one thing it does is that it it helps you to understand where the owners are, where the trainers are, and also you know, I mean, uh, it drives uh, it drives me because I feel their pain when their horse comes up, you know lane two days before their big event that they've been working towards for years. And so, you know, that's extremely frustrating. Um, so I have a lot of empathy with, you know, the owners that, that incur those situations. And, but at the same time, you know, uh, it's, it's fortunate that we are and has evolved quite a bit where, you know, uh, 90% of the probably, closer to 100% of owners, if you tell them, like, this horse is, needs a break, this horse needs to be done for a little while, then they're going to listen and they're going to do the right thing, even if it takes them a little while, um, you know, whether that's treatment or any other type of therapies, then 
or further diagnostics in, in some cases. But, uh, so yeah, just understanding the emotions and the decisions that they have to make on that split, you know, split moment notice it, that whether the horse can compete tomorrow or not, ultimately it comes down to the owner, but realistically, the veterinarian needs to be in full guidance in what's best for that particular horse. I think that's great. And yeah, it is, it's a lot of emotion, especially at some of those larger competitions where there's a lot of money involved, you know, there's a lot of money to be won at some of those horse shows. It's, it's a lot and it can be a little overwhelming when things don't go according to plan, but um, yeah, it's, it's definitely nice to hear what you have to say about that kind of stuff, just coming from, you, you see it on both ends, you know, how, how heartbreaking it can be to get to that horse show and then things just not work out. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what uh, drives me to be kind of proactive on the front end of that. If I can prevent injuries or if I can, you know, if a horse has a, a bad stifle, if I can get ahead of that thing and then, you know, uh, and manage it before it becomes a problem, uh, then, then it's way, way more efficient, effective, and less likely that the horse is going to end up damaging something else like a suspensory. So, um, fortunately, you know, uh, that's, that's the way things are evolving. And that's the, the way I like to, to practice medicine is, is to be as proactive as possible and pretty aggressive and try to get ahead of it. And it kind of goes back to what you were talking about earlier, where, you know, the the medicine has just changed so much in the last 10, 20 years. And and now there's so many different ways that you can kind of focus on that preventative measures and making sure that you're doing everything you possibly can to help those athletes, you know, perform as well and as long as they possibly can. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. If you, you know, whether it's a oral supplement or a, a systemic injection that goes in, intramuscular or a joint injection or any, you know, of the different treatment modalities, all that little bit helps. And as far as the treatment modalities go, I get asked that all the time and I get asked about different supplements all the time. Treatment modality wise, essentially anything that increases blood flow, especially for a ligament, is helpful. Um, and our job as veterinarians basically is not to quote unquote fix them. It's to some extent, yes, but also uh, our main goal, my main goal anyway, is to point their body in the right direction. And then, you know, if I can get them uh, heading that way, then there's a pretty good chance that we can get the horse back to where it needs to be. And I've learned from plenty of my mistakes. Um, that's the beauty about being an observational learner, because like I said, all my older brothers, I would sit back and just watch and watch them do something, make a bonehead mistake when they were growing up. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I may do the same thing, but I'm going to do it a little bit different. So I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so kind of transitioning from your experience as a performance horse vet into this product that you have recently created called Eeyore Strips, Equine Oral Recovery Strips. They're right. the first of their kind. Can you, I mean, like, I would imagine that there's a little bit of inspiration from your background doing all of the Ironmans and, and the marathons and, and all of that, that because it's, the strips are something that we see in human form. Right but have never been seen in horses. Right. Yeah. So that's exactly how it evolved. And it was like 2011, 2013. Uh, 2013 was, uh, that was the year that I kind of uh, decided to come up with it and do something about it. So, but it didn't start off as a strip. It just kind of evolved from waking up one morning to being like, wow, you know what? Our horses don't get, hardly any peri exercise nutrition they don't get anything immediately before during or after because everybody's scared they're going to colic and blah blah blah. so whereas being a triathlete in 2013 i did 
Ironman uh, Tahoe, which is, I mean, it was a, it was rough. It was it snowed like two or three inches the day before. The ambient temperature outside when we got in the water was like 28 degrees. And so there was snow on our bikes and it was brutal. And there was about a 35% uh, DNF rate where 30, 35% of people did not finish. Fortunately, I was able to power through with my wife and a buddy of mine. But um, yeah, so that's where it all kind of started. But I, I, you know, during that time when you're doing one of those events, you kind of get to where you have to eat like your body needs it. And so I just extrapolated that being, uh, you know, uh, equine sports medicine veterinarian, a former triathlete and, um, you know, uh, a horse owner and a avid lover of cutting horses. Then I, um, uh, just kind of started pointing that way. And I've had so many different formulations and tried so many different things myself as far as that goes. Um, but you know, it started off with the pellet, but I've evolved since then to get down to the oral film strips. And that being said, um, it's similar, very similar to a Listerine strip, uh, that you s- apply to the horse's gums above their upper incisors or below their lower or both. And also you can wrap the mouthpiece of the bit with it too, you know, uh, and it delivers just a little bit of glucose, some electrolytes and some B12. Ultimately, I'll have different formulations. We've got a patent pending. I've had, you know, tons of help in this process getting it to this point. Uh, but essentially we've invented the square wheel right now. It's pretty rough. You know, I'm, trying to get a few kinks worked out with uh, the manufacturing so it's a little bit more pliable and also maybe some different sizes uh, so that you can uh, add volume to the ingredient list, essentially. So it's it's not for the faint of heart doing something like this because, man, you you talk about there's plenty of good hardcore critics that will – jump on you and let you know what you're doing wrong. But, uh, you know, growing up like I did, there's, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hard shelled. So, um, you know, you just kind of fight through it and, uh, you keep going, but, you know, very exciting news yesterday. Uh, we did, we did an independent study and, um, in that study came out that, uh, the, the horses that were supplemented drank considerably more water than the, the test group. In particular, in that case, um, it was in Oklahoma. We had a, it, it went from 87 degrees to 68 degrees in two days. So a pretty good, you know, 19 degree temperature change. The, the test group, um, the horses with the supplement drank two to three times more than the um, group, than the control group. So that was pretty significant to me. And, and knowing that it's all about hydration as far as horse health goes is, is key because you can, the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Well, hopefully we can change that. We'll just have to, you know, keep, keep plugging along, but man, it sure looks promising so far. Oh, that's incredible. I, I know I've used them personally. My mare of people who have listened to this podcast are very familiar. She had two colic surgeries last year and is missing 70% of her colon. And I, these have come in clutch because like when I go to the horse shows and it's really hot out, I can, I can, in and she's already a pretty good drinker but man it's nice to know that there's you know she's getting everything that she needs to yeah to be absolutely. happy and healthy it's, yeah, a, it's and a really cool product yeah yeah and it's fun it's definitely different the ability to wrap the mouthpiece of the bit with the the product is is novel and and it's effective too because some horses just don't want you messing with their mouth 
I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, in the case like your, your horse is just lucky to be alive, to be honest with you. So yep. hats, hats, you. Off, <laughs> hats off to you and your veterinarians because they did a heck of a job. Yeah, she should not be alive. They gave her a 50% chance of making it seven days. Yeah, that's impressive. That's so really Now impressive. I want to do anything I can to to keep her happy and healthy, and your product's definitely part of the uh, routine. Yeah, I, you know, I think so. And as it, as it evolves and as we move forward, hopefully we can get, you know, a, f- a few things worked out where to uh, – um, where I do have some different formulations for different horses, uh, and under in different circumstances and even have some, some, you know, different, uh, supplements in the, the strip itself. But it's, uh, it's a pretty cool product. I've got one here so y'all can kind of see. And some of them are, are pretty brittle. You can see this one's nice and pliable. You can just kind of bend it and put it on their top lip, but. It's uh, and you can kind of fold it around, and you can wrap the mouthpiece of a bit, as you can see. But they're not all that pliable, and that's one of the the things that we're working on. And uh, thanks everybody for bearing with me and dealing with the brittle ones because I know I know how frustrating it is. Because believe me, I've cussed quite a few of them. <laughs> well, mine just <laughs> likes to eat them as a treat. So. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Putting them in her mouth because she just wants. Yeah, to <laughs> I mean, so and that's okay. It's not ideal, but realistically, it's not going. It's going to get stuck in their oral cavity, so it's going to get absorbed. Very similar, and you know the the volume that you can fit in those strips is never. You know, we're not. We can't compete with a a paste of uh, a syringe full of electrolytes or a powder. There's no way you can fit that volume. It's not meant to replace those. There's plenty of great products out there that are meant for pure electrolytes. This is more going to be like a hydration strip or a little boost. A lot of the uh, barrel racers that run on Lasix uh, really like it. And then a lot of, you know, my reining horse clients and cutting horse clients that haul everywhere really enjoy it as well. Um, because, you know, it a lot of times – they're traveling, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, and those horses need to drink when they get the opportunity. So when they stop and, and offer them water, it's beneficial that they've got every opportunity to, to get as much as they can. So so if you're going to use this product and you are hauling, which is obviously a very great reason to use this kind of product because horses tend to stop drinking as much when they leave their their barn or where they're comfortable and and when water changes and when would someone use this strip? Would you give it to them right before you want them to drink water? Do you give it to them the night before? Like how, how does one apply those when they're on the road? Yeah. So, and I get asked this a lot and it depends on your situation, but typically I tell people to do it the night before that way it's going to go to work. And if they're going to drink more, they're going to, and, and they're going to drink it overnight. So they're going to go into that day hydrated. You can put one in the next, the following morning, but I would be prepared to stop and at least offer them water within, you know, four to six hours so that they have a chance to drink if they want to. I've got a, one of my clients, uh, I will leave him unnamed, but he, <laughs> He was cussing me. He put the strips in one time. He's like, man, I said, how do you like those strips? And he, he said, man, I hate those freaking things. He goes, I had one horse that never drinks water. He had to stop and like he offered him water. Well, he drank four buckets. So he's having he, the reason he hated them is because he had to go back and forth and get more and more water. So not obviously not five gallon buckets it was like a gallon bucket or something but he was just giving him a little sip and he just kept drinking so i gave him a hard time about that but so a good problem to have <laughs> yes exactly exactly yeah but, so you something that caught my attention earlier is when you were talking about um you know the the myths that kind of come with 
people are always worried about colic. So they're not doing certain things when they're training them or at a horse show because they're afraid of it. Whereas maybe, you know, by giving them these strips or something, they're allowing them to have the nutrients they need and the hydration they need to, to do their job. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, I mean, the main thing is just trying to keep them as healthy and hydrated as possible. You know, if a horse gets dehydrated, then they kind of, everything starts to go south. Their performance danger gets hurt and their health gets hurt. Those are the two key things that, that happen to them right away as soon as they do start to get a little dehydrated. Um, but that being said, you know, it's not a magic bullet. It's another tool in your toolbox. Um, you know, it's, it's like a, any, there's not a magic injection that I can give. I use probably 15 to 20 different things, uh, you know, and multiple different modalities of diagnostics and treatments. And this is along the same lines. It's, it's, it's not going to work on every single horse and it's not going to fix every single horse and it's danger not going to make them, you know, uh, run a faster time or mark a better score. But it will help to ensure that they're as healthy and hydrated and happy as possible. And that's the key. But especially, you know, when when hauling, that's critical Uh, because you get to a lot of different locations. The water tastes different. The horse doesn't like the bucket, blah, 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 or doesn't like his neighbor and doesn't like where the bucket is. Well, if you encourage him to have to drink, then they're going to drink. Um, but I, I feel like it's, you know, there are still lots of unknowns on this. I don't know what all it can do just yet. Uh, but also we're, we're making progress and just getting that first little study done. And I hadn't had a chance to really look at the numbers yet because I just, he just told me the preliminary yesterday. So that's exciting. Uh, we're getting, you know, close to, to getting our, uh, production dialed in. So it's an, an exciting time and the patents getting close to being dialed. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be quite a ride. That's awesome. I, I, you know, when I first learned about them, I, I, my brain obviously went, this is geared towards performance horses. It's here to kind of help them. But the more you talk and, and that study really just kind of sounds like it's just a great tool to have in your toolbox. If you are in a climate where you see those big weather changes and, and you need to encourage drinking, I know here in Colorado, we go from 70 degrees to 10 degrees, which is why my horse colic to begin with. And, right. you yeah. know, that it, it's uh, when I brought this product to my barn, I know a lot of people out here, you know, they don't show and they don't have six figure performance horses, but they were really excited to find something that would just kind of help their horse drink more and just offer them that extra little oomph they need to get through those big weather changes. Right. Absolutely. And, and during those times, just like in Oklahoma, I mean, I remember it would draw, it could draw 40 degrees in an hour and yep. that's just with the blue Norther. But, um, and those type changes, the horse kind of go, body goes into survival mode. And the last thing they want to drink, do when they get cold is drink cold water, you know, which is key, which needs to happen. And what happens to everybody is that we all fall into the same, yeah, they need more hay to keep warm and then they don't drink enough water. And then now you have an impaction type situation. So then they, they get colicky and then it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, no, definitely. So that, that's, that's kind of the way that I, uh, you know, just the necessity of needing something for, and, and it's been for horse, owners to be able to do um, to help ensure that they do get a little bit more water or have every chance. And like I said, you know, hopefully it will uh, continue to evolve and we'll have some good feedback. And so far it's been good. And that's by far the most consistent feedback I get is hydration. So that's awesome. Well, for those that want to learn more about 
your product or you, is there anywhere online that they can go to visit to kind of learn more about it? Sure. It's at uh, eorstrips.com. Um, and we are basically just strictly on for sale on uh, online through the website. Uh, and right now we're still buy one, get one free because like I said, a lot of the strips are brittle. And so it kind of doesn't meet up to my standards. So, and I've given out tons of samples and all, all my helpers are like, dude, you got to throttle back with that. Like we, you can't give out anymore. (laughs) So, uh, so I'm kind of taxed on that end, but, um, Anyway, just to just to get feedback and get them out there, and it's it's been fun. Uh, it's it's been a lot of fun, and fortunately, I'm surrounded with some really good vet techs and and helpers and assistants, and you know, it's it's everybody's been very supportive, and also my biggest critics as well. So. <laughs> Well, I, it's a really exciting journey. I'm sure 20 years ago, you probably weren't telling yourself that you would be trying to create a brand new product for horses. That's you know, that's now probably consuming a lot of your time. It does. It does. And a lot of people are like, "Wait a minute, you're still practicing full time too?" I said, "Yes, uh, I am definitely doing that too." Yeah, you're an overachiever. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I need to have my head examined. We'll see. Well, I look forward to learning more as you guys get more of that research out there. And, and you know, I would love to to keep in touch about if you expand your product. I think it, it just sounds really cool. And it's, it's yeah. like I, you said, it's not going to cure all your problems. It's not meant to be a replacement for electrolytes. It's just a really great tool to have in your toolbox. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, you know, uh, we're kind of winging it, but we're going to the AAP this year. So that's going to be in Orlando in December. We'll be set up down there with a booth and I've never done anything like that in my life. So we'll, it'll be a lot of fun. I can guarantee you that. Hey, so. I we have a lot of coworkers that go to AAP and they have a blast. So I'm yeah. sure it'll be fun. <laughs> Yes, it will. It will. Just manning the booth, it will be definitely new for me. Yeah. But the AP in general is, is usually a lot of fun. Yeah. So, But anyway, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. I really appreciate it. And yeah, you bet. Me. Thank you. Yeah, sure. If anybody has any questions or wants to reach out, you can get, go to the web sh- website, eorstrips.com, uh, or email uh and we will get back to you. Actually, yeah, uh, we're also on Facebook too. So Eor Strips uh, is our Facebook handle. I'm pretty sure, or maybe just Eor, but we'll leave, we're out there. You'll find us. We'll leave it in the show notes as well, so everybody can just kind of click on it from from the podcast. So yeah, send them there. Yeah, I, you can tell I'm not privy to all the details. <laughs> exactly on some of this stuff you're just the brains behind it it's okay (laughs) i don't know man i am yeah i'm running around in circles sometimes well thank you again for talking with us i so appreciated it you bet no worries thank you nicole once again we'd like to thank our sponsor eeyore strips for sponsoring this episode of the ride Thank you guys for tuning into the Ride Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode and please be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow Horse and Rider Magazine on social media and find us at horseandrider.com to see all the cool things that we're up to. And if you have any comments or questions, please be sure to hit us up at horseandrider at equinenetwork.com. We want to hear from you guys. And if you like what you're listening to, please be sure to leave us a review on iTunes.